Want to know an easier way to expose Sony S-Log3 footage? This is it. Now you're probably used to this, where it just shows you the whole scene as an average of being at plus 0.3. Now the problem with this is that because that is an average, there might be things that are still over or under exposed. But we can actually set up the camera so that I can actually move my focus point and this black circle will follow. Within that black circle is an accurate exposure reading. So if I go to Alex Turner's face, it shows me that that is plus 1.3. But if I go to the black table there, it shows me that that is negative 1.7. Go to the white wall, that is zero. Alex Turner's face, plus 1.3. You can also tap on the part of the screen that you want to focus on or expose on, and it will do exactly the same thing. So if you're new to exposing S-Log3 footage, or if you're exposing in more demanding situations with contrasting light, this could be really useful. Let's take a look at how you can set it up in your camera. Or for the cost of a coffee, you can download my settings below, install them on your camera, and everything we're about to show you will just be done for you instead. And you're lazy. But that's okay. It is going to cost you a few bucks. Depending on your level of knowledge, you may be using zebras, you might be using a gray card, but for run and gun situations where the lighting is constantly changing, the subject is constantly changing. With the phantom lights, which is what I use and we'll talk about why later, I find this the most effective way to properly expose my S-Log3 footage. This is how you do it. Well, assume you're using Picture Profile 8, which is S-Log3, and you have Gamma Assist turned on. That's just going to allow you to see how your footage is going to look once you've converted it from Log to Rec 709. Jump into your menus. Now, I'm using the A7S3. It will be similar on the FX3 and A7 IV. Go down to where it says metering, which is in your exposure color. Go to metering mode, change it from multi, which it probably is set to straight out of the box, or you may have been using center. Change it from this to spot large. You can use standard as well, but I like to use large. On spot metering point, change this from center to focus point link. What this is going to now do is it's going to tie that little black circle we saw at the beginning to where your focus point is. Next, we need to assign a button that allows me to choose a focus point. I use the D-pad. You can also just tap on the screen and it will do the same thing. Go down to setup, go down to operation customize, go down to custom key setting for video, go down to rear two and change number one, which is my D-pad, to focus area. Now go back to look at how your shot's gonna look and click on the D-pad. Now pick your focus point. In my case, I'm gonna use the spot large. You can also go with medium and small. I just like large. Now you can see I can move around my focus point and then when I hit the shutter and it focuses, it actually shows me the accurate exposure reading within that black circle, negative one. Back to Alex Turner's face, plus 1.3. Now, as I said earlier, I use the phantom LUT and I like to use those because it's purely an exposure based off of look. So I'm not overly concerned with there being a little bit of noise in the shadows. I don't need that clinical look. Having that little point allows you to pinpoint exactly the part that you want to be exposed properly. And that's why this is really effective. When you start looking at how to expose S-Log3 footage properly, everyone tells you you gotta be plus 1.7 to two or something like that. I'm not here to tell you you need to expose at 1.7 or 1.3, that's entirely up to you. I'm just trying to help you find a better way to gauge how your exposure actually looks. The phantom lights are just fantastic for a really quick, easy base look. You can use these as a one-click solution if you're not used to color grading and you're gonna be really happy with how they look just by clicking that box and seeing it apply. But once you start getting used to color grading a little bit more, you will be making some tweaks here and there. If you wanna try them out, there's a link down below and you can use the code on the screen and get 15% off. If you like this video, you are getting some value from it, please consider subscribing. The button is just down there. Worst case scenario, you can unsubscribe in the future. There's no contract. And if you decide the black circle is a little bit too big, it's reading too much in that black circle, you can go back into the menus, change the metering mode from spot large to spot standard, and then that actually creates a smaller black circle so it's a bit more precise. If you wanted to as well, you could actually change the D-pad when you click it from focus area to switch focus area. And then how that looks is when you click on the D-pad, it actually goes through and cycles through all the different focus point options you have available to you if you just prefer to work that way instead. If you do want to know more about the Phantom Lutz, maybe check out this video up here, or if you're looking at building a rig for your Sony A7S3, then maybe check out this video up here. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.